Super Bowl champ, former Packer, James Jones, friend of Aaron Rodgers joining us. Aaron looked happy last night. He did. I mean, he's looked happy since he landed on the plane in New York. Have Uh, you talked to him much at all? I have. I have. I talked to him. Um, I was actually supposed to uh, go to New York to check out a couple practices and all that and see he how bought a beautiful home there. in new jersey he did yeah i told him save me a room you know what it's mean? nice <laughs> yeah it is yeah it is he living his best life out there man he's he happy lo- you, you see know? that he's looking over the skyline hey, all them windows hey he good so new jersey's nice yeah it is gets a bad rap jersey's mm-hmm. beautiful yeah it is it's nice yeah so i told him save me a room now it's all about him playing well that's it um it's weird preseason. um over the course of four or five years, nobody plays it anymore. Yeah. So, like, what does Aaron do for the next five weeks? Like, what do you work on? Well, for 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 Aaron, it's all about the timing with the receivers. It's all about the communication with the offensive line. We on the same page. Who knows how you're gonna play? How much you're gonna play in the preseason? Could be a series. Could be a quarter. Who knows? But while you at practice and you're able to watch the film and you're able to kind of, you know, correct the young guys and, you know, hey, listen, this is how I want it when I get in there. You know, I think all that stuff matters right now for Aaron Rodgers. So I think that's what they're going through. The young guys that sitting there that has an opportunity to make the team that's going to be on the offensive side of the ball. Hey, when I get in there, this is this is how I want you to do that. This is how I want you to do that, and especially offensive linemen. You know, the communication going to have to be big. So you had that relationship with Aaron when you were a young receiver. Yeah. What does he like? He likes you to be where you are supposed to be, right? That, that, that is huge for Aaron Rodgers. I tell all the young players that play with Aaron Rodgers, all he cares about is if he is in the meetings and he says, this is how we're running this route, and you show him that, hey, I'm listening and I'm running this route like this in practice, he is going to come to you in the game. If you do it the way you're supposed to do in the game, you're going to get plenty more opportunities. Aaron Rodgers is a perfectionist. He don't like missing that practice. He don't like missing in the games. And when we're talking about this stuff, that stuff that might be able to change in the games, scramble rules, whatever it may be, and you going and you are where you're supposed to be, Aaron Rodgers is going to find you, and that's how you build his trust and confidence in him. Um, Garrett Wilson, what do you see, the receiver for the Jets? Ooh-wee. I see a guy that can easily be the number one receiver in the National Football League. And when you look at it from a talent standpoint, you start at the line of scrimmage, right? Can he get off the line of scrimmage? And he is Keenan Allen, and he is Devontae Adams' quickness off the line of scrimmage. Amari Cooper off the line of scrimmage, quickness, creates separation. Then do you have the top end speed? He has that. Then do you have the route running ability? He has that. So when you look at Garrett Wilson and you see the intangibles and you see the talent that this young player has, he easily, with Aaron Rodgers, could be the best receiver in the National Football League. Oh, boy, look at that. Now... One thing that people don't understand about Devontae Adams is his football IQ is second to none. He is a quarterback playing the wide receiver position, right? I don't know how the IQ and football IQ of of Garrett Wilson is, but if Aaron Rodgers can get him even close to the football IQ of Devontae Adams with the ability that he has, good luck to everybody trying to guard him. I just feel like with Aaron, he's – you know, he does darkness retreats. He's a very thoughtful guy, yeah. right? Like, he's he's kind of – and I kind of feel like New York, mm-hmm. they got an owner, free agents will want to play there. Yeah. Like, I, I, I call it the, the Packer quarterback syndrome. Yeah. No owner, mm-hmm. free agents don't want to play there, <laughs> no nightlife. Yeah. It's not as easy as everybody thinks. No, no, no. No, be, be honest about you're, it. You're exactly right. I've seen free agents come in there, and right when they walk in the building, hey, Green Bay facility second to none, arguably the best in the National Football League. But right when guy, I've been in there working out, eating, whatever, when free agents would come in there, and right when they walk in there, the first thing they say was, oh, no, nah, ain't nothing out here. You know, like, that's that's the first thing they say. And if you're coming from Atlanta or you're coming from Dallas, saying, you, come you know from what Dallas. I mean? And then you landing in Green Bay, you're like, nah. You know, I know they winning. I know they got an MVP quarterback. You know, I possibly could win a Super Bowl. But they're like, nah, nah. You know, and and it's tough to get free agents to come play there. What did what did you and, I mean, what did it, how do you, could Aaron go to the grocery store? No, no, no. People got to go grocery store for Aaron. He so, wouldn't be able to grocery shop. So, he would I mean, not be able to make it through the grocery store. I mean, even, even a guy like me, I'm not even close to Aaron Rodgers. But when I go in there, I'm going in there for 20 minutes. I'm in there for, I'm in there for two hours. 
talking to people, signing autographs. I'm a people's dude anyway. So, but yes, you, Aaron, Aaron can, so he can go nowhere. In you Green have Bay. to sacrifice stuff to be a yeah. star quarterback in Green Bay. Absolutely, absolutely. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, like if he go to a certain restaurant, there's a private room in the back. Hey, you know, they've it, got to it, have. It, it'll be crazy. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be crazy if he just, you know, just is walking around out there in public. Yeah, I know he joined the local <laughs> golf course to get yeah. away, but it's probably. People. Oh yeah, it, it's wild for him. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I saw that it's, it's funny about this Trayvon Diggs. I get trash talk. Mm -hmm. I've seen it, <laughs> but when you lean into the quarterback's face mm. and use the B and a word, mm. like you and I, mm. I could like you, yeah. but I would never do that to somebody I respect. You would have never done that to Aaron. Never, never the B a word. No, um, shut your B a up. Like that just was like timeout. Nobody's yeah. doing that to Mahomes. No. And, and not only that, nobody's doing it to teammates, right? I don't, I don't care if you're a superstar. I don't care if you're on the practice squad, right? When you, when you're in the locker room, that that's that's brotherhood, right? I've I, we've seen plenty of fights in training camp. We've seen dudes get in heated conversations, and 15 minutes later, they friends. But when you use language like that, and even the force. We all know them, them fighting words, them, them, them disrespectful words. I could compete against Charles Woodson and Al Harris, Tremont Williams, Nick Collins for eight years. Never in my mind, even if it's pushing and shoving and you can't guard me, you, you weak, whatever, never would I disrespect them like that. You know, on top of them being my brothers, my teammates, just the respect factor. You, you, you don't do that to a teammate. I don't care if he's the leader. I don't care if he's just a practice squad guy. That right there is disrespectful. You don't come at your teammates so like that. So Stephon Diggs can be uh, outspoken. Trayvon Diggs can. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just how they're raised. Maybe it's just – I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to – I don't I, – Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, it could be a little bit of Did that. Did you ever have a, co a, co a teammate that would do that to you ever in no, your career? No. Did you ever have a teammate you didn't like? I mean, it was a couple of teammates where I'm like, hey, I'm not too fond of him over there. But it wasn't like I would I still the disrespect would, would never happen like that. That's See? what I'm saying for me and for Dak to be close to that team and be the leader of that team and, you know, be close to a lot of them guys on that team. And the way he said it with the force that he said it, you could tell that he really meant it. Right. You know, like, I mean, and I'm just going off of what I see. You know, they could be best friends. I don't know. But from what I've seen right there on that tape, he meant that. You know, you know what I'm saying? And to, to disrespect a guy like that, I mean, you better be ready for a reaction. Obviously, he kind of knew Dak wasn't going to give him the reaction he was looking for because anybody else, that might be a different reaction right there. So, um, Brock Purdy in mm -hmm. seven games. Yeah. So, he's the last pick in the seventh round. Mm -hmm. Comes in. Shanahan's got – everybody's good with Shanahan. Yeah. Like, how do you think players look at Brock Purdy? Last guy taken in the draft, mm -hmm. puts up good numbers, but yeah. Matt Ryan was an MVP and yeah. Garoppolo won with him. How do you think Purdy is viewed by players? I mean, I, by players or his teammates? Teammates. By his teammates, I mean, I think they absolutely love the guy. When you got a kid that comes in here as the last pick in the draft, and it's coming in here. Not making a nickel. Not making a dime. Coming in here, playing his tail off, right? Working his tail off, right? Winning football games, right? You don't get star players like George Kittles and those guys coming out saying, yeah, hey, Trey Lance was a first-round pick, but hey, hey hold, hold, hold on now. After seven games, we already know that Brock Purdy is our guy. That's the respect from the locker room. That's the star players on your ball club talking. And Brock Purdy, from, from what he's shown, obviously to Cal Shanahan and his, to his teammates, this is his team. And it's impressive uh, just to watch Cal Shanahan get the best out of these guys, every, every really quarterback that he'd had. I mean, turning these dudes into really superstars. And Brock Purdy's the next one. All right, let's go to that quarterback tier list. Mm. That's the one where 50 executives yeah. and coaches, coordinators, scouts, yeah. uh, Mike Sando at The Athletic does it. I didn't have a huge problem with it. I think most of your ones are your ones, your twos are your twos. In fact, I think sometimes the twos are better than the ones, but they're not as consistent or they're young Trevor Lawrence, Jalen Hurts, yeah. or they've been hurt Lamar Jackson. I thought, I thought Jared Goff was totally disrespected yeah. being in the middle of uh, the third. Um, I tend to think Stafford's a, a tier one talent, but he, he struggled with health. Mm -hmm. Anything there bother you? Anyone that just you thought, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I don't know how many guys go into tier one. I only see five guys yep, right that was there. It. But with what Jalen Hurts has done over there, and I know it's not a big sample size, but 
to already have been to a Super Bowl, right? And play great. Played great, right? In the MVP conversation. And I'm looking at Justin Herbert up there, and I'm looking at Josh Allen, who's never been to a Super Bowl. Justin Herbert, you know, playoffs, you know, the Chargers disappear. Jalen Hurts should be in there. I'm not saying who to take out. I, I ain't getting now, into all that. Hur Hurts but Jalen is, Hurts should be in that tier one. Yeah, that, that that's the argument. So yeah. he is the highest rated tier two guy. I Meaning yeah. he's he was a couple of votes away from getting there. He does lose his coach. Their schedule's tougher. And you, know, you know, the thing I like, and I say this all the time, so it's sort of a cliche. Deshaun Watson's obviously done stuff I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Most of these guys, though, one of their talents is they're grownups. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of not a lot of trash talking in here. Yeah. And I watched that quarterback like, Netflix series. Yeah. Those guys are adults. Hey. Kids, wives, they can compartmentalize mm -hmm. the house stuff, the 100%. house drama, the brother <laughs> drama. 100%. It's impressive. Have you hey. watched any of that Netflix? I, I have watched what it. Do you, what do you make of it? I mean, I love it. I mean, being able to just to go into people's homes, being able to go see how these quarterbacks prepare. You know, I coach Little League football right now, and I tell my quarterbacks, you got to be the smartest, toughest dude on the football field. And you got to be the same thing off the football field. You got to take care of yourself off the field. And I know you don't got families and all that now, but when you get to a certain point like these guys, how you got to juggle your family, you got to put in, watch more film than anybody in the building. You got to be prepared, way more prepared than your receivers, than your O-line. You have to know everything. So just to take us inside and to see the ups and the downs, you know, like you go in here and, you know, when when you're not playing well, what your wives and stuff get, you know what I mean? When you are playing well, how your wives and your family and stuff is treated and all that. It's crazy. You're touching the football every single play, all eyes on you every single play. So I love it. I, I like how they give you just the, the full inside of, you know, what it takes to really be a quarterback in the National Football League. A lot of quarterbacks passed on it. Mahomes said, put it on my yeah. plate. I was just like, and you know what? His wife has big opinions. Uh, his family's mm -hmm. got some stuff. He, there's a lot of stuff in his life. No question. 40 endorsements. Yeah. That is a big life. <laughs> and he handles it. Like, he yeah. just handles all yeah. of it. Andy Reid said two weeks ago, we're going to put more on his plate. Yeah. I almost think sometimes some of these guys are born to do it. That's it. I mean, when I, when I look at Joe Burrow and I look at Patty Mahomes, these are dudes that I just feel like, man, these dudes is born to do it. You can't put too much on Patrick Mahomes' plate. He's shown you. Anything you give me, I got it. You know, I don't, I don't care. I don't care what it is. Anything you give me, Andy Reid, uh, off the field, whatever it is, I got it. And when I step in between these lines, I'm going to be Patty. James Jones, Super Bowl champ, former Packer wide receiver. Look, he's on speak today. That's why he's got a nice suit on. <laughs> you look like a pro. Appreciate Great it. seeing you as always. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.